Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Today we're going to tackle this crankshaft center bearing. It consists of an aluminum outer shell and an inside bronze bushing with a oil groove in the middle of it. A couple of countersunk holes to secure it to the crankcase. Well, let's take a look at the print and see how we make this beast. Next up is our center crankshaft bearing. We've got the two bearings on the ends, and now we're going to make a split bearing that fits in the middle here. It's going to have an aluminum outer shell with an internal bronze bushing. It'll have a groove cut in the middle of it, and it'll have an oil hole to deliver oil to our crankshaft. We're going to make it from this block of aluminum. And I'm going to be using an off-the-shelf bronze bushing um, for my insert. This can be made from a solid piece of bronze and turned down. This particular bushing that I've got here is a 7 16 ID, which will be reamed to a half inch when we're done. It's going to be split. Now, this if you use a bushing like this, I recommend using a cast bronze bushing. This particular one here is a centered bronze bushing. It's made from a bunch of small bronze particles um, pressed together under heat and pressure. It makes a nice bearing because oil is able to seep into those micro cracks between all the centered particles. However, it doesn't machine very well. It tends to crumble while you're machining it. That's why a cast bronze bushing would be better. The bushing consists of an alum a split aluminum outer shell and then the internal bronze bushing shell. So I'm going to take this piece of aluminum, drill and ream it, take this bronze bushing, press it in, lock tight it into position, split the bushing, separate the top half, screw it down to the bottom half, take it over to the lathe, turn the outside, drill and ream the inside take it apart, face the backside. So that's the strategy. Let's see how that goes. We start off by using our edge finder to find the exact center of the aluminum block. I touch up on all four sides and set my DRO to zero. Then I drill my pilot hole. Now I don't have a reamer that's 5 8 inches in diameter, so I'm going to use my boring head to bore this hole out so the bushing is a tight fit. I've used the boring head a couple of times now. I've used it on the cylinder block and I've used it on the cylinder head, so I'm feeling pretty comfortable with its use. I'm taking about 5 to 10 thousandths of an inch of material off at a time, and this seems to work pretty well in the soft aluminum. I'm using the green thread locker Loctite to secure the bearing into the aluminum block. I pressed it in with my vise and then let it sit for a day. I face off the top of the bushing and then mount the block into the vise. Using a drill bit of the proper diameter in the bushing, I'm able to use my edge finder to accurately locate the center axis of the bushing. I remove a little bit of extra material with the mill because I plan to drill all the way through the block for the mounting screws. 632 screws will be used to secure this bushing into the crankcase and the holes will eventually be clearance holes with the threads in the crankcase. But here I'm using the drill size for a 632 tap because I will thread the bottom half of the block and use 632 screws to temporarily hold the top of the bearing to the bottom of the bearing while we do the machining in the lathe. I use a 332nd end mill to create my countersink pocket. We need to bury the heads of the 632 screws into the aluminum so our lathe doesn't hit them during the machining of the outer diameter. This should make more sense when we see it loaded into the lathe. I touch off the slitting saw on the drill bit and then cut through the middle of the block right through the center of the bushing. When using a slitting saw, I run it at a relatively slow speed and move it very slowly, taking small bites of the aluminum, and I keep it well oiled. Then I pull the workpiece out of the vise and remove the top half of the aluminum block with a bandsaw and screw the whole unit together. 
Now it's time to head over the lathe and bore the inside diameter of our bushing and the outside diameter of our bearing holder and maintain perfect concentricity. This is our setup. We've got a dial indicator here set up indicating on the inside of this bushing. I'll rotate this around. I want to zero this out as much as I can to balance this. Let me, let me do that and I'll get back to you. What I do is I line this up opposite the dial indicator, take a reading, then flip it 180 degrees. And now the idea is, is to split the difference here. So that's roughly there, about what, 12? Here, that's about the same. So now we'll do that on the sides. It's a little tougher because the split bearing. I just want to kind of get in the ballpark. The turning of the outside diameter is fairly straightforward. We use the micrometer to ensure we reach, we reach the proper diameter, and we use the top half of the crankcase as a fit gauge. Here it's a little bit too tight, and here we have our perfect fit. I'm facing the end, but I have to be very careful because there's not a lot of material. I only left a couple thousandths when I measured the position of the 632 mounting screws. We now turn our attention to the bore through the bushing. We need to open this up so we can ream it to a half of an inch plus a thousandth. I'm using a small boring bar. I could use a drill bit, but I don't trust it to maintain the perfect concentricity that we're looking for. I bore the bushing out to 0.475 and then ream it to 0.501, which will give me a thousandths clearance between the bushing and the crankshaft. The hard work is now done. We take the workpiece out of the lathe and separate our bearing from the base stock with the bandsaw. We remount it in a four jaw chuck using some soft aluminum packing to protect the outer surface and then face the backside, bringing our bearing to proper thickness. And finally, I use the small boring bar to machine a groove in the center of the bushing. It's only about 10, 15 thousandths deep, and it helps the flow of oil from the crankcase through the bushing and out over the bushing crankcase surface. Moment of truth. Tighten the bearing on there. And it's a little tight, but it'll spin. I think that's good. I think it'll run in, right? And then So the last operation is to drill these holes into the crankcase and secure that center bearing. But what I'm seeing here, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. All right, well that finishes the center crankshaft bearing and it finishes the crankshaft assembly. We've already finished the camshaft assembly and we're well on our way working on the head assembly, making good progress on our 30cc Wallaby engine. So I'm Greg, thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Until next time, take care.